you know the feeling, eh? You know the feeling of, I don't know, that swish in basketball, that bullseye with the dart of just right in the middle. That feeling of being in the right spot. Feeling of peace, contentment, accomplishment, purpose, whatever it is. When reality and your expectation just zip, just right there. And you feel good about yourself for what you've done, for what you're doing. You feel in the moment. It's easy to do that with sports. But where do you get that feeling? Where do you get it? When do you get it? This is the preface, the actual question I'm going to introduce in a moment, but let's let's build it up a little bit because this is important. And remember, if you want the quick clips, TikTok is right there on your home screen. Uh, go for it. You know when I get it? You know when I get that feeling? Sure, it's a swish, but I don't play basketball all the time and I'm not playing sports as much. When it's midnight on the meadow and the cats are in the shed And the river tells a story at the window by my bed You can listen very closely, be as quiet as you can In the yard you'll hear him, it is the pony man I sung that to my niece once, she absolutely loved it, loved it There's a house on a hill by a worn down weathered old mill in the valley below where the river winds there's no such thing as bad times oh my gosh and you're probably wondering what the heck is scott doing what's he singing it's gordon lightfoot may he rest in peace and i get that feeling and i've had it since i discovered him in 2015 uh, a feeling of being in my true element in nature. When I play his music on guitar, when I just sing it, when it's in my head, when I listen to it, I'm in the pocket. I'm in nature. A lot of his songs sound like nature, and I wonder if you listen to music that sounds like something that's familiar. You know what I mean? His music sounds like that river, sounds like those, those trees and that forest. And he wrote a lot of his songs in Georgian Bay and Algonquin Park um, in northern Canada, specifically northern Ontario. That's when life is real to me, when I'm playing music, when I'm in that moment. Can I share something else with you? And please reflect on this for yourself because it's the most important question you're ever going to ask yourself in a second here. I get that feeling when I'm helping other people. I get that feeling when I'm being of service to others. I get that feeling when I'm speaking to a crowd and just sharing the human condition with no agenda and nothing to sell because we're all just here and we didn't ask to be here and we have no idea sometimes of what our mission is, what our goals are, what our purpose is, what's this all about. Totally. So ask yourself this question. When and where is God most real to you? Some people on this channel um, were commenting that I've been, been using the word God more and I am 100% a Christian and I have certain beliefs and throughout my entire life, I've been pulled and pulled and have been pushing and pushing away. I went into the yoga and the mindfulness and Buddhism and I tried all, everything else and I've just been pulled and pulled continually back to the church and to Christ. And I can't hide it anymore and a lot of what I speak about hits a dead end when I can't bring the spirit into it. And... Um, so you're going to hear the G word a little bit in this podcast. I know that'll turn a lot of people away. That's okay. And I know that will bring people here as well. But it's up to me to live authentically. And I love connecting the old with the new. Not just the Testament, but Eastern religion and mindfulness into scripture, into the G word. 
Um, and I still hope this is a very inclusive channel for everybody because mental health doesn't discriminate, mental illness, and this is always what it's been about is, is me helping you see the good within you and trying to help you along the way as I am reflecting on my experiences and, and I'm on the journey too, man. I'm on this path. But this question is really interesting because when is God most real to you can mean a lot of things. To you, what is God? That's the biggest question. Let's pretend that He, it is the all compassionate, all loving. You are born out of love. You exist in love. You are made in His image and you are love. When and where is God most real for you? Where do you feel the most love? Where do you feel the most loved? Where do you feel the most driven? When do you feel it? How do you feel it? When is God, that sense of love, most real to you? Because I don't feel it all the time, man. I don't feel it. I doubt. I doubt. And it is so much easier being an atheist than a Christian. It's so much easier to not believe in God. You, you mean I got to believe this story? 2000 BC up until year zero and then 33 AD? This guy's crucified? That's just one religion. You know how hard it is to make sense of that. But if you get rid of all that, and you just know that there's something else, let's play that game. Let's be inclusive here. You know there's something bigger. Let's call it the creator. Well, if you are made from love and are love, and you are designed to be loved and to love other people, when is that sense most real to you? When do you really feel it? And when you can answer that, do more of it. Do more of it. That's the call. That's the feeling. That's maybe where you should put some energy. So if I really feel like, you know, I feel good when I'm speaking to people through this lens and people are hearing my voice and hopefully something is speaking through me and the ego is, is dropping a little because I really want to be of service to you. And this is about all of us. It's not about me. But if I can help people a little bit, I feel that I'm doing a good job spreading something helpful on here, something resourceful, something that can calm people down, bring a sense of peace and help you see the good within yourself because there's so much of it, man. There's so much of it, my goodness. And it's hard when we see and experience other people going through that. And sometimes when we can't see the good within ourselves, when I'm beating myself up and I say, where'd the love go? Where'd the divine go? Where'd the spirit go? I can't feel it anymore. We go through that all the time. But if we can logically then know our mission and know even in the times when we can't feel it, that we know where to go and we know where we've been to gather that sense where God is most real for us, you always have that place to go to whether the feeling's there or not. That can be your safe haven. I, um, you know, I, I, I read a comment and a few of them. I don't, I don't usually read them because there's fear in that for me, actually, because I am a little fragile when I put effort into a talk and I really believe what I'm saying and and then I read someone who just hated it. And I'm like, you know, part of me is just like, oh, but uh, so much effort and it and it hit someone the wrong way. And uh, I know, I know that's that's something I deal with, man. That's something I deal with. And what takes the edge off a little bit is that sense that it doesn't, end with me and it doesn't start with me oh my god how egotistical how self-centered and the more we center life around ourselves the more those comments the more those judgments the more those failures become so internal and we keep judging ourselves and blaming ourselves because 
who else would be in this with us if we're the center of everything? The reason I'd love you to take apart this question and think about it this week is because it's helped me so much, and I know it's helped others and made others ponder when I, when I framed it this way, is when is God most real? When do you feel him the most? And does that change? Is it in different locations? Does it depend where you are or does it depend on what you're saying or what you're doing or who you're helping? What factors does it depend on? And when I know that I'm doing something in that place of realness, in that place of belief, then something comes through and it doesn't start and it doesn't end with me. And that brings me relief to those comments, to when I speak to you here, to when I speak to an audience. It's not about just me. You ever get that feeling like you're just tired of me? You ever say that to yourself? When you're tired, what are you tired of? When you're tired, what are you tired of? <laughs> I was looking up. I'm excited, man. I'm doing my master's as I told you all and I'm looking into, I was looking into doing my master's of divinity because it's been, you know, since elementary school when I've been drawn to this and I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's for another topic. But when you feel like you're tired, when I say to myself after a day, after a hard day, after a long day, I'm exhausted. And it's not just physically there's energy in me, but I'm mentally done. What are you tired of? And I ask myself, what am I tired of? Am I tired of responding? Am I tired of emails? Am I tired of giving? And some of the time, not all of the time, because this channel is never about absolutes. Absolutely. Never. When we live in absolutes, we, lived in, we live in black and white and there's so much in between. So we're not talking about always on this channel. The only thing that's always is that you'll probably shit about three times a week, hopefully. If not, maybe some chronic constipation's going on. So that will be an always. Good. Other than that, things are up and down, baby. So when we feel tired, it usually has to do with I'm just constantly on defense and constantly centered throughout my day. That's when I become tired, when things have been all about me for the day. And I'm tired of myself, to be honest. I'm tired of thinking about me. I'm tired of doing my own taxes. I'm tired of making the bed. I'm tired of cooking my own meals. I'm tired of thinking about myself. I'm tired of planning the future for myself. I'm tired of, you know, going through the past and trying to fix things and reframe things. I'm tired. I'm tired of booking stuff. I'm tired of editing my face. I'm tired of me. Does this mean I don't love myself? Absolutely not. But the love needs to be shared. Because where God is most real is when we can give love. We can be love. And through that, we can give it. We can be loved as well. That means we need to be open both ways. Two channels right? Two channels, sodium, potassium pumps and nerve cells, right? There's a constant exchange of sodium and potassium. There's always an in and out, right? What's sodium? Give me the periodic table. Na, that's right. And what's potassium? Yes, it's K. Okay, so we got some Na and K coming in and out. And have that rhyme just ready for you. In and out, in and out. There needs to be this constant exchange of ions for our cells to communicate, right? And there's that membrane around all of our cells. And if there's a channel blocked, man, we don't function. We don't function. We need it to be on, coming in, and coming out. That's balance. That's homeostasis. So if we're constantly giving and giving and giving and giving... But we can't receive the love and the thanks and the admiration and the eyes that people give us. Then we're going to be depleted and we're tired of ourselves. But if we receive and we receive and we receive and we receive, imagine a cell. We're getting blown up, man. Imagine you just keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. We're going to swell up. And then your three times a week of shitting goes to zero. 
baby. That's an impacted colon, my friend. Woo! You're going to get swole, but in the wrong places. You're going to be Randy from Trailer Park Boys with that gut. So, there needs to be that balance. So, where God is most real, there is a balance of giving love and receiving love. I hope that question is changing for you. It moves you. Don't answer it in two seconds. Sit with it. Be patient with yourself. Right? Put it on the shelf and visit it in a month. Visit it next year if it's too much right now. You know, right when we get information, we feel like it needs to be dealt with right away. Mm -mm. No, it's not an exam. I didn't hand you a test and you have an hour to do it and you can't go to the bathroom and you got a pen and you got the Scantron sheet and your, your teacher's looking at you. No, it's not like that. You answer this question in your own time, bud. All right? You remember those times during exams when it would always be winter for the winter term and I'd always have a sniffle and you don't want to blow your nose in front of 30 kids. So, so I don't know if any of this has happened to you, but you're just like, and you're just sniffing the whole exam and I can't concentrate on the question because I'm just focused on my sniffing and not to drop snot on my paper. That was probably anxiousness in there too. I hope this question helps you when and where is God most real for you. If you enjoy this podcast episode and this talk, I'd love to do more of it. I'd love to use the G word in more of this. And um, I'm going to create a video probably next week just thanking you all for watching, for being part of this, for commenting, for giving me love through messages and through comments. Because I know this is a digital medium, but that's how you send it. And sometimes I'm scared to receive it. So in this episode, I will read every comment that pops up. And I'll receive as much as I can. And I hope me giving this, you can receive it as well and it's useful to you. Take care, everyone. See you next time.